Hey everyone, it's, it's Karen from Mayfly Life. Today I'm going to be doing um, something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while now. And it's basically um, uh, a homemade cracker that uh, like Scott's been experiencing some uh, some stomach issues. So I figured, you know, like he's been going through our crackers like there's no tomorrow. I thought this would be something really good uh, to help with settling his tummy uh, when he has uh, some tummy issues. So I'm going to make, uh, it's a rosemary sea salt cracker and I'm going to try and do, um, do what I can to help give him something healthy, a healthier alternative rather than um, having to uh, go to a store-bought variety, which, which is what we uh, normally have. But I want to, uh, like I said, I've been trying to eliminate as much as I can uh, out of, uh, you know, processed or store-bought. So I thought this would be a good time to, to try out this recipe. So uh, come along with me and uh, I'll show you how it's uh, made. Okay, what we're going to start with, I'm going to do is, uh, it calls for a cup and a half of white, just all-purpose flour. I'm going to get three of these. I'm hoping that this bowl is going to be big enough. Oh yeah, and I gotta preheat my oven to 500 degrees. That's 500 degrees Fahrenheit. There we go. So what I'm doing is I've got a cup and a half of uh, the flour. I'm also going to add a teaspoon. Of course, <laughs> salt. And in there it goes. And I also need uh, sugar. Okay. I also need uh, about uh, a tablespoon. And I freshly ground this of rosemary. Just sprinkle that in. Give it a mix mix so that it's incorporated. And then I'll be adding the other ingredients. Uh, this recipe yeah, is uh, very simple. And uh, with the rosemary and so forth in it, it, sh it should help settle the stomach a bit. Um, you can also use this cracker, like if you're doing a cheese plate or whatever, and you uh, have a various uh, varying cheeses on a cheese board along with meats and fruits and so forth, this would be great as well. So I've incorporated that, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. Now this is a one. For some reason I'm all doing halves today. This is a tablespoon this is a half tablespoon measuring spoon. So I've got a tablespoon and a half of olive oil and I need half a cup of water. Okay, I'm just gonna add that in here. And just give it a mix. But what I want is I want to start doing it pretty much with my hands. So you're just going to give it a mix. And you're going to incorporate all the flour in with the water. I'll bring you back once it's done. Okay, so I'm cutting it in half. And I'm going to just throw a bit of flour on my 
counter and flatten it out a bit. And get a nice marble rolling pin. I've had this rolling pin for years. So what I'm going to do is just roll it out nice and thin to probably, oh, I would uh, hazard a guess it would be about an eighth of an inch thick. Oh, it smells good. All I can smell is that rosemary. That smells great. Now my oven is still heating up and it has to be 500 because what you want to do is you want to crisp, crisp these up really good. So, you know, like I say, you roll this up and what you're going to do is you want to make it as even as possible. And if you have to, you know, throw a little bit of flour on top to prevent uh, your pin from getting, you know, getting stuck with the uh, dough, then do that. And just keep rolling. I decided to do this, uh, like cut it in half because it's more manageable that way. And just roll it over. It's actually a pretty nice dough. Oh, there's my oven. It's ready. And then you can either use a knife or your um, or you can use a, a pizza roller and uh, then you're going to cut these into nice squares. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm transferring the dough that I've cut onto my cookie sheet. I'm just lying them flat. Just transfer them over. And I'm, I'm laying them uh, apart enough where there's room that uh, for them to breathe, so to speak, so that they uh, aren't touching, uh, so that, uh, you know, the heat can circulate around them. And I'm just using my knife to put them on and slide them over. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of water to them on top. Because uh, I'm gonna be sprinkling sea salt on them or a kosher salt it doesn't matter you can use either or you can use a sea salt or kosher salt and you want it coarse okay so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sprinkle on top uh, some kosher salt it's a little heavy duty and I'm just going to sprinkle it on top of each cracker so that just gets a little coating of salt you don't want lots just give it a nice little coating so that the water will help the uh, salt stick so it's like I said you just you don't want to go overwhelmingly so with sea salt or, or uh, kosher salt or whatever but uh, you want enough that it's going to taste you can, you're going to be able to taste it. And that's, like I said, that's what the uh, water's for. Okay, so after that, I'm going to take a fork. I'm going to poke holes in them. Because what you're trying to do is uh, to prevent them uh, from puffing. Uh, I let my first batch go uh, without salt because I, uh, I didn't want all my crackers with salt on them. And I left it without the puff, without uh, poking them, because I want them to be a little puffy. 
But this batch here, I want to be more like a soda cracker. So it's like I said, I'm taking my fork and I'm poking a few holes in each individual cracker. I'm going to shove them in a 500 degree oven, but as soon as I get these in, I'm going to bring them down to 425. Why this recipe calls that for that, I have no idea, but that's what it says. There. And I'm going to set my timer for 12 minutes. Okay, so now I've got the crackers out of the oven, my second batch. This is the one with the, uh, the sea salt, uh, or the kosher salt. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let them cool. And my last batch has cooled down, and I put them in this mason jar, which is great uh, for storage. And this will go in my pantry. Uh, are really good. Uh, you can see that some of them are darker, others are uh, lighter. It just depends on, uh, like I flipped uh, the pan around because these were browning uh, darker for at the back of my stove. So I flipped them around to make it uh, even, but otherwise these are a nice, light uh, cracker. And they taste actually pretty good, so I'm going to enjoy them. So thanks for watching. Give them a try. Catch you in the next one.